Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Avik from your military wall. Today's topic is about Hegel and it is fully in English language. Those who have a desire to learn Hegel in Hindi, just go to the playlist and you will confront three lectures. One is literary theory and literary criticism difference. Second will be Hegel's concept and third will be the concept of Marxism. Friedrich Engels and Karl Marx con concepts will be there. So these three lectures are all in Hindi. Today's topic will be in complete English. Those who do not understand Hindi, this is only for them. I am going to provide you the slides in the group, so you need not to worry. Those who are going for CUET, PG and GATE examination, you need not to read every single thing when it comes to Hegel. Just the foundational ideas, I am going to take one or one and a half minute to expose every single thing when it comes to CUET, PG and GATE examination. And those who are going for the net exam examination just hold a bit so that you have to read things in a bit vivid manner not completely but more vividly and more precise manner why we need to read Hegel to understand Hegel to understand Karl Marx Hegel is needed because Marx is belonging to materialism and Hegel is belonging to idealism and Hegel created a substantial influence on Karl Marx and his philosophies so when it comes to Hegel, the first thing that you must focus is his works. When it comes to CUTPG and GATE examination, remember these one and a half minute that will do every single question solution you are going to find out here within one or one and a half minute. When it comes to Hegel, the first work, Phenomenology of Spirit, and the second is the Philosophy of History. Remember these two works only, the Phenomenology of Spirit and the Philosophy of History. Sometimes it is known as the Philosophy of World History, but it is the Philosophy of History in the first place. Apart from that, Hegel created the concept of Cunning of reason, if you go to the JNU previous year question papers of a PG examination or DU, you will confront this term, cunning of reason. So the entire concept of cunning of reason, it is created by Hegel. And Hegel says that reason is cunning as well as mighty, M-I-G-H-T-Y. This is the extra information that you must remember. Apart from that, Hegel created a narrative which is known as master, M-A-S-T-E-R, and slave narrative. This is the second or possibly this is the third point because cunning and reason works and the master um, master and slave narrative. Apart from these three points, Hegel created another concept which is known as dialectic, D-I-A-L-E-C-T-I-C. And this concept is very important when it comes to Marxism or well, whether you go for the concept of Hegel. And this entire concept of the dialectic philosophy, it is holding three different different stages one is thesis second is antithesis third is synthesis what is thesis there is an idea what is antithesis the second idea is going to come and going to contrast the first idea and at the same time the second idea that is contrasting the first idea it is holding some similarities with the first so you can say that the first idea and the second idea they are holding some kind of similarities and at the same time both ideas are complete contrast and to pacify them there will be another concept which is known as synthesis so th synthesis through synthesis the thesis and antithesis these two concepts are going to be pacified these two concepts are going to be fused or mingled that's the thing you need to do and this is the stages of the concept of dialectic of hegel although thesis synthesis antithesis these three terms do not occur in hegel's philosophy it is a mistranslation of the oversimplification of hegel there is another term which is known as sublation s-u-b-l-a-t-i-o when those who have studied hegel deeply they usually know these terms sublation s-u-b-l-a-t-i-o which is you can say standing as equal to the concept of synthesis although in terms of synthesis it is only the fusion but in terms of hegel sublation it is holding three different different characteristics you need not to know anything of that just for the basic understanding that this is not the truth that we are all teaching that's the main idea that's why i have propounded the ideas of the sublation of hegel so the four concepts or I guess the five concepts are done. Apart from that, they can ask you that who 
propounded the concept of spirit s p i r i t it is hegel h e g e l and when it comes to spirit it does not mean any kind of ghost or any kind of supernatural agencies or any kind of religious figure but it is the spirit which is your consciousness getting my point so this thing remember and when it comes to spirit they may ask you the translation of spirit which is known as geist g e i s t remember that term spirit is also known as geist so the phenomenology of spirit the phenomenology of geist you can say so these five terms we are completely done and when it comes to the slave and master narrative in the examination you can confront this idea that the nature of the slave and master narrative so the, the nature of the slave and master narrative is completely dialectic d i a l e c t i c that's all the thing you need to remember apart from that remember only one concept which is known as idealism i d e a l i s m what is the concept of idealism that our thoughts are going to create the outside world it is not the intercourse with the material object that we are all surrounded with are going to create our thoughts but our thoughts are going to create our world view the best example we can see in indian philosophy is atithi deva bhava we should not care that how our relatives are or how they are treating us or what kind of gifts they are providing us if there are uh, three relatives and one is quite holding huge amount of money second is holding a moderate amount of money and the third is not holding even a single amount of money i can say a kind of poor that we must not treat these three people unequally or inequally we must not treat them that okay this person is holding huge amount of money i'm going to treat that person differently from the second or the third person and the third person who's holding not a single amount of money a com- complete beggar or you can say a kind of poor person then i'm going to treat that person differently no when it comes to idealism your thoughts are going to determine that how we are going to watch how you're going to understand the wall rather than that the outside wall or the materialistic position is going to make you in a way to think in a way that you don't want to think this is the concept of idealism that your thoughts are going to determine your actions rather than some materials are going to influence you this is the concept of idealism and this concept of idealism is standing as a contrast to materialism m a t e r i a l i s m so what is materialism that when the materialistic world is going to determine that how you are going to think this is known as materialism and this concept of materialism or materialistic philosophy is created by friedrich engels and karl marx these two people which is also know, which are also known as the classical marxist they are the creator of the concept of materialism and materialism is standing as contrast to idealism one example of materialism can be that a person who is holding an iphone in his or her hand say for example that a person is going in front of the mirror taking a picture if you provide the same person with a phone which is known as you can say motorola or redmi or Uh, nokia that person is not going to take any picture and not going to upload uh, in the profile picture or in the status but the moment you are going to provide that person uh, an iphone that person will going to click a picture where you can clearly see that the logo of the iphone and how this is the concept of materialism cause if that person is creating a picture with nokia like the keypad mobile i can give you the guarantee that you are not going to like that person's profile picture or you are not going to pay that much of close attention to that person's life but if that person is creating a picture through the iphone or through a branded company which all the people acknowledge then obviously you are going to pay attention not because of that person you don't give a damn about the person but what you are interested in the materialistic position that the person is having so the having of the iphone is signifying that the person is belonging from a highly socio economical household the person can be intelligent these are known as hollow effect in psychology hollow effect sorry not hollow hollow effect in psychology that you through that mobile you are going to create a complete understanding of that person's life 
this is known as materialism you don't know the person but the materialistic position that the person is holding through that position you are going to constitute an idea of the person that how the person is or how the person will be that is known as materialism that's the reason that people those who are having iphone mostly they go to the in front of the mirror and they click a picture because they also know that whether they are holding any kind of value or not it does not matter but having an iphone give them a kind of identity that they are standing upper in the hierarchy or in the echelon this is the concept of materialism and this is what all of you only need to know when it comes to uh, Karl Marx in the first place because his entire philosophy is mostly based on materialism and that materialism in standing as a contrast to the concept of Hegel and Hegel is the person who also propounded the idea of difference the IFRENCE how that concept of difference came into existence obviously the thesis antithesis and synthesis the first idea is standing as a contrast to the second idea or the second idea is standing as a contrast to the first idea this is how the concept of difference came into existence as we have studied the concept of structuralism of Ferdinand Saussure most of the cases we mispronounce the entire name Saussure you can say it's like S A W S A W S U R E this is the pronunciation Saussure not Saussure or something like that it's Saussure mostly oh you can say Saussure doesn't matter if the other person can understand that what only matters is the base of language that must the other person must understand what you are saying so Ferdinand de Saussure says the same thing that in languages there are only differences. Language may be different. Eh? The same concept can be seen in terms of uh, the concept of Hegel, the entire concept of master and slave narrative, the entire concept of the dialectic. It is created on the basic of the concept of the uh, concept which is known as difference, D I F F E R E N C. And even Hegel says that the identity is arising from the difference or differences that's that this is what all you need hegel is completely done the next lecture will be karl marx and i can give you the guarantee that you need not to read more than that oh apart from that if they want to go for any kind of hard question that they may ask you that what is the concept of history according to hegel so the concept of history according to hegel is it is a movement of the spirit towards something obviously since it is a movement the entire concept of hegel's history it is fluid rather than static it is dynamic that's why the concept of history is holding the fluidity and if you go for the concept of history of karl marx it is also dynamic rather than static it is not stationary but it is flowing in the first place so when it comes to hegel's concept of history it is the movement since it is fluid of the spirit towards the self actualization and hegel says that there are three processes through which you can attain that self actualization and at the end when the actualization happened your goodness will be fused with the goodness of the state s t a s t e and that state is ruled by a monarch m o n a r c h and that monarch is benevolent like the philosopher king of plato in plato's republic and this idea is completely contrasted and destroyed by karl marx he says that the monarch cannot be like that a benevolent philosophic kind of philosopher king but most of the cases the monarchy is a reflection of the interest of the powerful people which you can say the bourgeoisie so that's the end of the lecture that's the concept of hegel we are completely done whatever you want to question you may question you can go for the comment section you can just go to text message whatever you need to know i am going to provide you the entire thing whatever you are personally having a problem with so that's that